Putinist literature can be broadly categorized into two sets, uh, the high literature associated with religion and religious institutions and found mostly in written forms, and then uh, folk literature, uh, which is associated with the local cultures and uh, often found in oral forms. The high literature consists mostly of Buddhist scriptures, commentaries on the Buddhist scriptures, manuals for meditation and rituals, uh, biographical accounts and life writing, genealogical accounts, mostly in the medium of classical Tibetan or Chike, the language of religion as it is called here in Bhutan. The folk literature exists in the local vernaculars and are very diverse. They consist of folk songs, folk stories, uh, local proverbs, loze ballads, tsangmo poems, tongue twisters, curse words, and so forth, uh, and also in numerous origin stories, genealogical accounts in oral forms, a lot of stories about sacred sites and sacred objects, local histories, and so forth. And when you look at these two sets, the first set of high literature is similar to general Tibetan Buddhist literary uh, compositions. But when you look at the local uh, folk literature, then because of the differences in our uh, geography and vegetation and lifestyle, uh, it's quite different from the literature you find on the Tibetan plateau to the north or the plains, the Indian plains to the south. Now, one of the very unique things that Bhutan has is this cultural continuity. Uh, Bhutan has never been colonized by a foreign power. It has never had any major natural calamities or uh, social unrest. So Bhutan enjoys this uh, incredible literary and cultural uh, heritage that has remained intact for many centuries. And when I first worked for the British Library, in 2004 to look at uh, books brought out of Tibet by the Young Husband Mission in 1903. I was made to go to the three main libraries in the United Kingdom and uh, look at the Tibetan books. And it was at that time that I was inspired to look at the archival collections here in Bhutan in the numerous temples across the country. Bhutan claims to have about 2,500 temples. Even if we assume that 10% of these temples would have a good library. We're looking at about 250 archival uh, collections and libraries. So I thought it's an incredible literary heritage that we need to, one, preserve, and two, make accessible to uh, users and international readers. So uh, I started the project to go and digitize the archival collections here. So far, in the last 20 years or so, we have finished doing some 54 uh, library collections. Uh, they are now available in digital uh, copies, and we have helped uh, preserve the original books uh, safely and make the digital copies accessible to a much wider readership. And while I was on a journey to digitize uh, the archival collection in Nepu Monastery in Paro. Uh, we got stuck because the road was washed away by the monsoon showers. And while I was waiting at the junction, my friends went to look for a porter and I was waiting there. And of course, I was with my bamboo hat when an old man walked towards me and seeing my bamboo hat, sung a loze ballad. Sha dagasha ge belo, nimsha se rangi belo be, chap chap se rogi belo me, uh, the bamboo head from eastern Daga region, you are my bamboo head during sunny days and somebody else's during rainy days. If you are somebody else's during rainy days, what use do I have for you during sunny days? And he said, this is what you chant to an unfaithful partner. When he chanted the Loze ballad, I was very impressed and I asked him, Age, can you chant more? Of course, he was uh, not willing easily, so I bought him a, a glass of beer and we sat at the roadside and he chanted many more such loze ballads, uh, which I recorded using a very simple Nokia phone at that time. 
and it, it occurred to me that when this old man who was in his 80s, already quite tipsy uh, mid-afternoon, um, maybe totally drunk by the end of the day, when he passes away, everything that he has chanted to me and many other things that he knew would also die with him. And that sort of uh, encouraged me to look for funding to do a major documentation of uh, Bhutan's oral traditions. So we have managed to now record over 3,300 hours of uh, folk stories, folk songs, ballads, poems, uh, tongue twisters, curse words, uh, proverbs, culinary recipes, ethnobotanical knowledge, uh, cultural practices that fall within the intangible cultural sort of domain. And these recordings basically uh, contain the folk literature that uh, even today remains largely in oral forms are, and are yet to be uh, transcribed properly, documented properly. So today as Bhutan goes through this very rapid transition from an isolated uh, hermetic kingdom to become a full member of the global village, from a um, largely oral society to an audiovisual world, from a totally rural community 50 years ago to now a largely urban society, from a uh, subsistence farming economy to a, a capitalist consumerist market economy, from a medieval monarchy to a multi-party democracy, from a nature-based, uh, mind-centered spiritual past to now a very secular, scientific, globalized, materialistic worldview. A um, lot of these literatures and the, the content, the message that these two different sets of literature has so far uh, transmitted, they remain highly, highly endangered. Today, a lot of young Bhutanese don't even have a very clear command of the local languages in which these literature exist. And uh, there is a major generation gap between the old and the new. So at such times, it is so important we do something about the Bhutanese literary heritage, both the high literature and the folk literature, because it is through this uh, literature that we can really preserve and promote um, two of Bhutan's best strengths, you could say, the uh, regard and respect for nature, Bhutan having become a champion of environment conservation and that being largely inspired by the, um, the cultural heritage we have, and also the mind-centered focus on inner well-being, which is also a very dominant theme in the local uh, high-end uh, folk literature. So I believe um, the traditional literature of Bhutan to be very, very important vehicles for transmitting these timeless and these very, very uh, important values for Bhutan as well as humanity um, in general.